We say all praises be to the Creator, all power to His people. In the name of Yahshua, the Black Revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom Aleichem. Give a special salute to the Black Messiahs. Our motto is stop waiting for a Savior and be one. Stop waiting for a Savior and be one. This morning, brothers and sisters, coming from Deuteronomy, 5th chapter, 9th verse, you shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Going to the Gospel according to Matthew, fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Then was Yahshua led up of the Spirit unto the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungered. He was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command these stones be made of bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. Then the devil take, took him up into the holy city and set him up on the pinnacle of the temple. And said to him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give you his angels charge concerning you, and in your hands shall he bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against the stone. And Yahshua said to him, It is written again, You should not tip the Lord your God. And again the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he said to them, all these things will I give you if you shall bow down and worship me. And Yahshua said, Get you behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Brothers and sisters, this morning, we're dealing with the sins of the Father. The sins of the Father. Now, I know this morning, there was unfortunately shootings last night, again in Durham, this time at North Carolina Central University. And I know everybody talking about it, and everybody wants to politicize about it. And if you vote for my candidate, it'll stop. And if you vote for my candidate, they have the solution. They don't have the solution. Because they are not dealing with the origin of the problem. Well, we're going to deal with it this morning. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we are. Now, let's go to Scripture. Yahshua had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. In the Bible, all numbers are symbolic. 40, 400, 40 and 400 are considered times of peril, times of war, time, I mean, whoa, times of distress, times of confusion. So Yahshua had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and then the devil, he was hungry, and the devil came to tempt him. And bottom, to make a long story short, he took him up, lastly, to a high mountain and showed Yahshua the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said if you bow down and worship me all this is yours this morning we're dealing with Durham we're dealing with Durham and how we got to where we are how the black how good black neighborhoods became the hood Somebody sold us out. Somebody bowed down to the devil. Somebody bowed down to the temp, uh, tempter. But people don't want to talk about that. See, 
People want to blame the hood and they want to go to this book, the Monaghan Report. Back in 1961, this a report was put out and basically what it does was, was blaming single mothers for the problems in the black community. So anytime they talk about the shootings in Durham, they want to blame single mothers who are uh, raising wild children who are getting guns that are miraculously just falling from the sky and landed in Durham. That's the narrative they roll with. But that narrative keeps us in the same perpetual condition we're in today because nobody wants to deal with if chickens come to home the roost and somebody bow down and cut a deal. They sold us out. In the 1950s, the government came up with an idea of urban renewal. Late 1950s, urban renewal, which went into the 60s and into the 70s. That was called gentrification. But back then it was called urban renewal. They had a plan that the way to separate the black community and the elite white folks from black people was just to drive the highway and knock over their houses. Take their house, well, acquire their houses, build a highway, and make that separation. That's what happened in Durham. That's what happened in Durham. But in order to pull this thing off in Durham, they needed black folks to convince they needed middle class black folks, the black bourgeoisie, to convince the black folks in the poor neighborhoods to get rid of their houses. So they convinced these brothers and sisters in the poor neighborhoods that if they got rid of their houses, if they sold their houses for pennies on a dollar, their life would be better. You want to read about the black bourgeoisie? Read E. Franklin Frazier's book called The Black Bourgeoisie. That'll give you an insight of the tactics they've been pulling on other poor black folks for years. So, going back to the scripture, let's use those big tall buildings in downtown Durham as an example. Satan, the devil, the tempter, took black leaders up on, up on top of one of those buildings downtown and told the devil told these black bougie, bougie people, if you sell out the black community, all this can be yours. All these can be yours if you sell out the black community. The devil said, look at this, look at East Durham, look at West Durham, look at South Durham, look out over Durham. If you sell out the black communities, let their house be bulldozed, let them uh, be condemned to perpetual poverty, all this can be yours. And they said, yes, sir, Massa, what you want me to do? What you want me to do? But let's put it into context. The 40, like I said, 40 and 400 are symbolic in the Bible. And in their mind, I'm just thinking in the black bourgeoisie, the black middle class mind, their, in their mind was, you know, we, we've been suffering for 400 years. We're hungry. We need money. So Satan, the devil, the tempter, has made us an offer that we can't refuse. All we got to do is sell out the black community and they will forgive us. We own the banks. Ain't nothing they can do. They might get mad, but they'll get over it. They'll eventually get over it. We'll, we'll, we'll run for office. We'll put some black folks in office. And they'll eventually forget about it. And we did. And we did. Eventually forget about it. 
And those same black folks who sold us out, we named buildings after them, we named schools after them, we named streets after them in Durham. So you're riding by, you're wondering, this, you see this black person there, they talk about this uh, prestigious black person there. These are the same people that sold us out. But instead of holding them accountable, we named buildings after them. This book by Brandon Wilford, John Hervey Wheeler, Black Banking and the Economic Struggle for Civil Rights. States that, although people complain about McDougal Terrace and they complain about uh, uh, Hoover Road and they complain about all these other public housing areas as far back as the late 60s they knew what was going to happen they knew when um, urban renewal came eventually this is what McDougal Terrace is going to become but it's easy to blame it on single mothers it's easy to blame it on 15 uh, and 16 year old children riding around, walking around with guns. It's easy to blame them, but it's hard to blame the people who have their names on schools in Durham for selling us out. We don't want to do that. We want to blame uh, uh, little Tyrone and them and little Rashid and them for getting the guns, but we don't realize it's chickens coming home to roost. The sins of the fathers are being visited on the third and fourth generation. You can't run from it. You can't run from it. So quit acting so surprised when you see these kids running around with guns. You did that. You did that. When you sold the community out and let them cram people into McDougal Terrace and other areas. You took their houses, bulldozed their houses, crammed them into McDougal Terrace, set up unsafe uh, living conditions. You knew what was going to happen. Now the sins of the fathers are being visited in 2021. These are your great-great-grandchildren that are walking around killing people today. Because you did not take responsibility for what you did. I ain't got to make this up. Research it for yourself. Do the research. You're going to have to look for it because they want to keep it quiet. They want to keep it hush-hush. They want to go around skinning and grinning and making campaign promises and scratching their heads. Well, uh, uh, we don't know what happened uh, in Durham. We don't know why they're shooting in Durham. Uh, we, we have no idea. We need solutions. Shut up! They knew eventually the chickens were going to come home to roost. But the money looked good at the time when Satan took them on top of that big building downtown and showed them Durham and said, if you sell the black community out, you can have part of it. We'll cut you in on the deal. They knew what was going to happen, but they took the money and ran. So, we have now a problem. We have now a problem. Grandma was bitter. Granddaddy was bitter that they got tricked. Somebody tricked them into selling their land. Rich black folks with money went into a secret agreement with white folks with money and they sold poor black people out. So great great so great grandma was angry that her land got stuck stolen. That anger went into her daughter and her son. 
that anger went into uh, their children and their children. Now, those offspring are riding around knowing that Durham was taken from them and they feel like riding around with an AK-47, riding around with a, a, a machine gun, some kind of assault weapon of mass destruction, they're going to get it back. That's why, that's why, that's why. Durham, they say Durham isn't really a gang thing. It's a neighborhood thing. It's neighborhoods competing against neighborhoods because somebody stole from them and they want it back, but they don't know who stole it. And you don't want them to know who stole it. So you walk it around having press conferences and all on the news and, 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 and swearing out you don't know how we got in this condition when it's in the book. It's in your own history books how Wheeler admitted um, when he got up in age, that urban renewal was a mistake, according to the book. According to the book, it was a mistake. But instead of owning up to the mistake and fixing the mistake, you better play dumb like you don't know what the solution is. You don't know why the youth are killing each other and Durham. Playing games with the lives of our babies. Until we stop playing these games and tell history the correct way. Tell these youth who took their great great grandma's house and fix that correct that lie, things will never change. Things will never change. So, this morning, brothers and sisters, I charge you, just tell the truth. Just tell the truth about what happened in there. It's that day, brothers and sisters, I don't care who gets mad. It's to save these babies. Black Messiahs, let me talk to you. We have a charge. Isaiah 61, part of our charge is Isaiah 61, verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Ain't that what we're supposed to do? Well, this is our proclamation of the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. You lied to the people. Now it's time we tell the truth. The truth that will make them free. Unless y'all just happy seeing people getting shot every night and then the same people talking about, oh, we don't know what's causing the violence because you don't want to deal with your history. And until we deal with that history, as the scriptures taught, teach us, the sins of the fathers will be visited upon the children until the third and fourth generation. Let's tell the truth, brothers and sisters. Stop being scared. Especially none of y'all who don't want nothing out of them. See, so, I'm going to leave that alone. If you don't want anything from the devil, the devil has no power over you. Scriptures teach us if you don't want what the devil has, the devil has no power over you. But we don't confront the history of the black bourgeoisie and their selling out of the black, uh, poor black folk because many of us want what the middle class black people have. But if you don't 
want what the devil has, the devil has no power over you. Break this cycle, brothers and sisters. Break this cycle. So the sins of the fathers will stop being visited upon our children. As we leave you with the Black Messiah motto, stop waiting for a savior and be one. Shalom.